as we actually go to the festive period, I thought I'd knock up a quick recipe, so bear with me. First and foremost, grab 11 tangerines, give them a good old squish, and squash them in, in the bowl there. Next up, you get your favourite swede, chop a little bit of that bad boy in there. Next up, your favourite nut, get yourself a bit of this stuff, a bit of that pepper, chuck that bad boy in there. Finally, for sweetness, you get yourself some of these bad boys, chuck them in there. And you get, give it a good old smash a room like this. Make sure you really pound them tangerines. Give them a good stuffing. Then pop that bad boy in the oven for 90 minutes. And after 90 minutes, make sure you take that bad boy out the oven. What does that make you? Another Rover's win, of course. Right, folks, back once again with another match review. Now, before we get stuck into the actual craziness of four wins on the spin, make sure you hit the subscribe button, keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. It is chaos right now. I can't believe it. I cannot remember the last time Rovers went on such a an, an awesome run, and it's a, just the right time in my eyes. We do have a little bit of a breather now as we edge towards the FA Cup this weekend against Crew Alexandra, but we're going to go into the month of December on a bit of a high, and the momentum is with us. Hopefully we'll, we'll continue with the momentum in the uh, in the FA Cup. Maybe rest a few key guys. Give David Raya a breather. Give uh, Charlie Mulgrew a bit of a rest. Some of those key guys that have been playing uh, week in week out. Maybe it's a good ch chance for them to take a take a, a, a well earned rest and give the other guys, the Canadian fella, the Mountie, getting back in between the sticks for the game against Crew Alexandra because. Uh, we now sit fourth in the table and only three points off second spot, five points behind Wigan, who are top of the table right now. We do have a game in hand of a third place, Scunthorpe, who are also on a bit of a momentous run themselves. So I think they're five on the spin, maybe even six on the spin. So competition there for Tony Mowbray for Gaffer of the Month. Anyway, let's jump into the match itself, Rovers. 4-2 winners at the end of the day. It was a bit of a goal fest once again. Uh, Marcus Antonsen opened up the score on the 25th minute. Bit of a calamity of the Blackpool defence. They were, they were quite shocking the whole night. It was quite surprising that it wasn't us that was creating all the errors at the back. Even though our goals that we did concede weren't the, weren't the, weren't the, weren't the prettiest either. So uh, calamities all around in defence. But Ant Antonsen's got his, uh, I don't know what number goal he's on to now. But he opened up the score on the 25th minute. Uh, Blackpool retur retaliating, brought the game back to 1-1 with a goal on the 29th minute, but just before half-time, Bradley Dack on the 45th minute to give us a 2-1 lead at half-time. Into the second half, Charlie Mulgrew once again on the score sheet. I don't know, again, he must be knocking on top goal scorer uh, at the moment. He scored from a free kick, 63rd minute. Then Downing got in on the action on the 67th minute. We were in party time. It was Carnival time and Bloomfield Road for Blackburn Rovers, but... Phyllis Cook make it a little bit interesting on the 75th minute to make it two to Blackpool and four for Blackburn Rovers. But Rovers held on in the end uh, for a comfortable victory. Let's take a look a little bit deeper at the statistics. Blackpool dominated possession by 51%, Rovers 49%. It's all over Blackpool. They were consistently pressing them. Whenever they had the ball, Rovers were chasing them down. And that is, I think that's the Mowbray's uh, style of play. He wanted to instill, instill that into the Rovers players. It's taken... Uh, now 19 games for us to really click into a groove and hopefully uh, the, the other teams don't don't kind of suss us out in the second half of the season uh, because it's, it's working now. I think the momentum is with us, that the players are starting to understand Mowbray's uh, uh, style of play and how to grind out results and, and what's needed to get the wins. Um, but yeah, it's taken taken a while for getting into the momentum. Anyway, uh, 14 shots for Blackpool on the day, 19 for Blackburn Rovers, six on target for Blackpool, uh, eight on target for Rovers, four corners to seven for Rovers, and we were the dirtier of the two sides, 13 fouls. Let's take a look at the starting 11 for Blackpool. All stop was in goal: Mella, Wilma, Anderton, Elm, Ameson, Turton, Solomon, Atabo, Longstaff, Spearing, ex Rover, Ryan. Daniel and Delfonso ex Rover, and he was pretty, pretty handy all night. Delfonso, he was a thorn in our side. Okay, didn't really. In fact, there was two or three chances that Blackpool had in the first half that could have made the scoreline completely different. But fortunately, uh, it was on. Our uh, favour was with us tonight. 
Um, and there was a, 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 just a massive result. The result leaves Blackpool in 11th spot, sitting pretty in mid-table. Hopefully they'll do all right and hang in, in, the, in there. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, they, they could compete in playoffs, but hopefully we don't even have to deal with that. Maybe we can galvanise and get to the second spot. As for Rovers, they fielded uh, this starting 11. Ryan and Gold, Nayimbi, Downing, Mulgrew, Williams, Bennett, Whittingham, Smallwood, Dak, and Thompson and Graham got the nod ahead of Samuel and Joe Nottle. And this is how I scored the fellas. Seven for Raya, seven AMB, eight downing with his goal, eight for Mulgrew, captain's performance. Um, Williams got an eight, he was full and full of running. Bennett seven, Whittingham seven, Small was seven, Bradley Dak with a nine out of nine, a nine out of ten for me, man of the match performance, and Thompson and Graham. Both got sevens. Impressive afternoon of football or evening or wherever you are, in wh wh whichever part of the world you're at. Um, it was a great result for Rovers. Great way to end the month. Now we could take a little bit of a sidestep in the FA Cup and give the likes, give some other guys, uh, maybe Gladwin can have another crack at uh, trying to stake a claim for a, a spot. Maybe Corey Evans and uh, Joe Nuttall, Dominic Samuel up front. I don't know. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I, I still see a lot of first team players involved with the game on uh, uh, against Crew. I think Craig Conway was touted to be in uh, in on the action on Saturday or on Sunday even. Um, so look forward to that. Regardless of it not being a league game, there won't be any previews or reviews for the cup games. Uh, I don't have uh, access to that video, so I can't really give an honest opinion. But anyway, looking forward to it. And right now, I am just chuffed to bits with the result and the and the and the position where we're in. As as it feels good to be good to win. It feels good to be winning. That was just a little taster of what I thought about the match. What did the gaffer had to say about the match? Here's his thoughts about the match, the goals, and the FA Cup coming up. Yeah, really hard fought. I thought. I thought. I thought Blackpool were a, a good side. I thought they gave us problems defensively tonight. They asked lots of questions of us. Um, but I thought we were really clinical. And um, when the chances came, they hit the back of the net. Um, and that's what we've been doing of, of, of recent. And so teams will become more wary of us on the change of possession. I think. And um, yeah, let's just keep going. Let's not get carried away. We haven't achieved anything in November, you know, let's uh, let's see how we go. No, I thought we were under the cost for most of it, but um, I think that's what we've been doing, haven't we? I think we've been really clinical the last you know, last month or so. I think when the chances have come, they've, they've buried them. Um, and that's, you know, quality has to do that really, you know, and I think there were both great finishes under the goalkeeper and um, and you can't dominate every game. You can't be the dominant force in every match. These were a decent football team, you know, with a manager who'd had them well organised and working really hard for a game he would have wanted to win. So um, I'm, I'm pleased for the lads. You know, it's a massive ten days for us. Um, great points, um, Hall. Great for the fans again who travelled in big numbers. And um, let's just try and keep it going. But let's keep our feet very much on the ground. Yeah, the team talk was still quite aggressive, to be honest. I think, uh, you know, you, I'm not daft, you can see what the opposition were, were, were treating the chances and we were there, we were waiting to get beat, to be honest. It, um, and it just was a tactical change, really. We, I think, if anything, we weren't spread out enough. We were all around the ball, because I've highlighted about second balls, doing the basics well, and um, we forgot to actually play when we had it. And so, you know, Peter and Richie needed to be further apart. and. Um, and so that we could actually get the ball out the other side to the opposite fullback, and and that paid dividends. And um, the goals came, and, and still edgy. They scored a second goal, and you know you don't you wouldn't have wanted to go to four three. I watched I sat and watched a, a bit of uh, QPR Brentford last night, and uh, two goals in you know a minute. It was um, you know so professionalism to get the job done to, to see it out, and um, and just delighted for everybody that uh, that came to watch it, and. Um, and for the team with a fantastic effort. Yeah, listen, he's, uh, I don't know what to, to say, you can eulogise about Charlie Mulgrew and um, you know, he's a top scorer or level top scorer in the club at centre half. And yet, so I think we're spreading the goals all right. You would want some somebody, of course, to jump out and score 25 goals. But um, at this moment, the, the, the team is spreading the goals out. Great to see Paul Downing scoring as well. Great that Daki scored again. Great that Marcus scored again. Um, and there was other great chances, you know. Marcus hit the post, um, Bradley had a, a shot on the six yard line, they should have rifled in and somebody blocked it on the line. Um, you know, good chances for us, but let's not get greedy, I thought it was a tough game that we came out on top of. Yeah, I think so, I remember a header at the back stick and I got scrambled off the line. But, um, but Danny Graham did very, very well, we can all see it, we can see how good he is with his body, 
he's a different type of player from a from a Samuel or a Nuttall or an Antonison, but um, you know, invaluable really to, to take the the weight of a game on his shoulders really when we, when we can play forward and he can keep the ball in the final third for us. Listen, our job as a football club and football players and management is to is to try and make football enjoyable for the people who pay good money to come and watch their team and, and long after I've gone then people will still be supporting this club and um, whilst I'm here I'll try and entertain, put a team on the pitch that can win games and, uh, and give them a good time. And, um, you know, particularly in this league, I think if, you, if we were to find ourselves in the next league, it becomes more difficult because you have got clubs spending 50 million, 60 million and, and having massive wage bills, it becomes more difficult. But I think Sheffield United have showed this, this season that some hard work and organisation can, can go a long way even in the Championship. And so, without getting in front of ourselves, we have to work really hard, just keep taking each game as it comes, try and pick up points and, and see where it takes us. No, listen, I, it doesn't really matter to me. I, I think uh, we just have to take each game as it comes. We have to try and keep the momentum rolling. I think a team who scored lots of goals, sometimes the opposition set up slightly different and, 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 and don't overcommit men forward, knowing that they can concede if they get caught wrong side of the ball. Um, but let's see, let's see. Let's, every game is tough, you know, as, as we've found. And there's no easy games in this league, whether you're playing the team at the top, team at the bottom. You know, highlighted by Berry, Berry beating Shrewsbury two weeks ago, top against bottom. And um, so let's just keep going, let's focus, let's understand it's hard work and what's managed to allow us to win some games is hard work, togetherness, endeavour, and a bit of quality. And, um, and just let's prepare for the next match. What about the fans and the players and everybody else? What's been going on on social media? Let's take a look. Elliot Bennett said on Twitter, Massive win tonight. Four wins in four with another fantastic away turnout from Rovers. As far as 10 days go in football, they don't get much better. David Martin or David Raya said, Fourth win in a row. Great effort from the boys. BRFC hashtag Rovers. Sam Hart, one of my youngsters. The boys are on fire. Indeed they are. Ryan Nayimbi once again. Great win tonight. Three more points in the bag. Boys put in, put the work in. And as for that, my man of the match, Bradley Dak, great performance with the boys, especially second half. Fans were unreal again. Another three points and four in a row. On to the FA Cup Sunday. Should I say or dare I say player of the year uh, candidate, Bradley Dak? Bit early, but uh, just throwing it out there. Throwing it out there. Moving forward, uh, Emma Hartz or Ems Hart said, when we got relegated in May, I never thought as a Rovers fan that good times would ever come back. I believe they are. Nights like the, tonight are wonderful. Uh, I agree with you to a point, Emma. Yes, it is great to see us winning. It is great to see us winning, but we are in League One, so um, obviously I'd rather be uh, uh, winning in a higher level. We don't belong in this division. We are at least a championship side, if not better, um, but we've got to get there first, and this is how we do it. So, yes, it is. But it was miserable the past two seasons watching uh, Rovers fail and, and, and get dragged through the mud and and with Owen Coyle and his losing ways and that was just torrid. That whole 18 months was actually miserable. Anyway, I'm going to move on. Glenn Mullen said, four wins on the bounce, scoring lots of goals, climbing the table, rapid. Rovers season well underway, hashtag promotion on, promotion on. Thomas Jackson K said, get in there Rovers, four wins on the bounce, Mowbray's magic, he wears a magic hat. Up the Rovers. Moving forward, Chris P. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to see Rovers win away. Turn them over, blue and white army. Come on, you blues. Ian Herbert said, a new chap started in our office three weeks ago. Spots my Rovers mug, tells me he's a Shrewsbury fan. What a turnaround since our first conversation. And then Andy said, that's some 10 days. Played 4-1-4. Drawn nil, lost nil, scored 13 let in five points, 12. Rovers are on fire. David Leishman said, fantastic win tonight. The Blues are marching on. Stephen Neal said, Mowbray has manager of the month in the bag, surely. I would agree with you. And I even said that uh, tweet or I mentioned that in my own twit, Twitter, whatever, Twitter sphere. And I got kind of, kind of back a little bit. Someone said Scumfort manager is going to get it with uh, six wins or five wins on the spin. He might do, he might not do, but Mowbray has done wonders this month of Mo Mowbray is now Movember. Mowbramba. 
That's what I'm going to call it. Anyway, away form is brilliant considering your loss on the opening day. It's now six wins from the last nine away. That's by Paul Marsden on Facebook. Darren Roberts posted uh, this. GB knows is a quote from Gary Bowyer. For the supporters there, I hope they do get promoted. They've been through a hell of a lot. So much respect to Gary Bowyer. I, you know, he left on uh, he left on, on good terms in my eyes. I, I, I always respect Gary Bowyer. He gave us our best shot of getting back into the Premier League. Um, we just missed out on the playoffs a couple of times. Uh, obviously, somebody got in the ear of Venkis and told him he wasn't for us. Okay, the football wasn't pretty uh, at the times, but it was effective. We had Jordan Rhodes. Um, it was all good times under Gary Boyer. Well, I say good times. It was reasonable times under Gary Boyer. He did, he did steady the ship, got rid of a lot of debt. And he did bring in some uh, bargains that, that, that managed to work wonders. You know, Rudy Gestead, uh, Tom Kearney, all those kinds of players were Gary Bowie's buys, I believe. And, um, and he did manage to pull us out of a bit of a slump. And now he's there with Blackpool. So congrats to, to him on the promotion last season. Anyway, I don't want to divulge onto that, but he's a good gaffer in my eyes. I have uh, much respect to Gary Boyer. Anyway, uh, Chris Walsh says, what a great win and a great atmosphere. Up the football league we go. Moving on, Frank Andrews says, four games, four wins in the last 10 days, three of which away. And goal difference, 30 to five. Shaking the league up now, up to fourth and just three behind automatic place. Keep it up, Rovers. Thomas Evans said on uh, one of the Facebook pages, Blackburn 2, Blackburn Rovers 4, full-time, fantastic result. Ugly first half compensated by second. Rovers players chasing the ball right to the end. Stuart Franklin also said, superb again from the lads. Another four goals away from home. Feel like we are finding our groove now in League One. And then Lewis Halliday said, why did MK Fakes get rid of this man? Biggest mistake of the season. That's right, Downing. Not only is he a defensive stalwart, he also knows how to put ball in the back of the net. And he did so tonight. I think he was the fourth scorer on the evening. Uh, moving forward, Joe Adams said, thanks for the three points, Blackpool. We're on the up. We'll soon be top of the league where we belong. Up the Rovers and Jack Beers were finally said, good game tonight. All those Mowbray out fans are thick. If he wasn't here, I think we wouldn't be fourth with only a game to win to become second. Just sit down, shut up, watch the games without saying Mowbray out, etc. You know nothing about football as you probably haven't been to Rovers since 2012. But anyway, good game tonight. Keep smashing it and we'll get to the top of the league. Come on, you blues. And Rovers till I die. But we weren't the only team playing football tonight. Obviously Blackpool were playing. But there was another game out there. Let's take a closer look at the result. And that result also had implications to the playoff positions. Charlton were held to a 2-2 draw against fellow playoff chasers Peterborough. And obviously that result kind of grinded out to a bit of a standstill. And actually paved the way for Blackburn to leapfrog Charlton into fourth spot. That's pretty much all I've got for you today. But before I go, make sure you head over to my YouTube channel and make sure you hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. We are going to wind down a little bit for like a week or so because of the FA Cup uh, madness. But there's lots of activity going to go on my channel anyway with the World Cup draw happening Friday. I'm doing a lot of stuff regarding the World Cup, so feel free to check that bad boy out. And I'll return back to the previews for the next league match in about a week or so. So stand by for that bad boy. I also want to give a big shout out to the guys of the BRFCS forum. If you haven't checked out the forum, you are missing out. It's a great opportunity for you to meet up with Rovers fans from around the world. Talk about results just like tonight's 4-2 smashing over Blackpool. So, uh, details are in the description below. Make sure you check that bad boy out when you get a chance. Anyway, I am also on Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud and iTunes if you want to check me out on the go. Uh, it's been a busy old month of November, but it's been Rovers month. And now we can look forward to the madness that is December. I had a quick look ahead to the schedule. And uh, I think there's six games um, uh, in the month of December. Maybe might, might overlap into January where they're all slam packed towards that back end. You know, from Boxing Day through to like the first, or the sixth or something. There's, there's such a huge amount of games uh, in the last three weeks of the month into into the first first week of January. So um, that is where we need to really click into gear as we want. Basically, we need to continue what we just did in November into December and January. Maybe, just maybe, not just close the gap on those top two spots, but maybe leapfrog them and maybe give ourselves a bit of a cushion going into 2018. But anyway, I'm going to leave you now. Uh, chuffed the bits with that result. Very happy. 
three points in the bag to join those other nine points we scooped in the last three games. So 12 out of 12, onwards and upwards. Till next time, thumbs up. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.